you know, I wish I had started a business many years ago. Um, so I think that's fantastic. People wanted to take the step and start their own business. Um, I think it's very rewarding. I would say to them, set yourself sort of parameters. Set yourself um, times where you work on the business, um, times for yourself and, and that sort of thing. Um, try to have some clear goals as well. Um, try not to get too distracted, especially if you're a home based, if you work from home and you're not in an office, try not to get too distracted by your surroundings and just, um, you know, be prepared. This is Diana Brooke and like many of our guests, she just wishes she had started sooner. Are you listening people? Just get started is the message from so many of our interviewees. The sooner you start, the sooner you know what's going to work and what isn't. Welcome to So You Want to Start a Business, the podcast where we interview business owners, entrepreneurs and other smart guests. This podcast is to provide you with tools, insights and lessons from others who have walked the path before you so you can hit the ground running in your own business. As always, this show is brought to you by my book, So You Want to Start a Business, and you can grab an excerpt over at www.thestartupsteps.com or if you want to grab the book, head over to amazon.com and it's right there or Booktopia if you're in Australia. I'm your host, Ingrid Thompson, and it is my absolute pleasure to bring you these interviews. And I thank you for taking time in your day to spend time with us. Listen out for the pearls of wisdom from Diana, and you may even want to make some notes. It's another terrific interview, so settle in. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's take the next step to help you make your business dreams a reality. Hello, and here we are today with Diana Brooke. Good morning, Diana. How are you? Good morning, Ingrid. Uh, very well, thank you. And how are yeah. you? Very well, thanks. A gorgeous sunny morning here in Sydney, and I know you're in a different part of Sydney, but equally gorgeous. So, Diana, tell us what business are you in? What is your business? Um, I'm in the business of sustainable travel um, and ideally looking at and promoting as much as I can eco-friendly um, travel uh, for travellers, businesses and the travel industry. Mm, fantastic niche there, isn't it? So when did you start this business? So I've been in travel, in the travel business space um, for the last 17 years, but the actual um, starting of the sustainable travel business was about a year ago. It's actually been in my mind to start this for quite a few years, but I officially sort of started it last year. Diana, tell us why did you start your business? Well, um, there was a few reasons why I started. Um, having been in travel for, for 17 years, I have actually worked quite a few years in travel agency stores and offices. But um, a few years ago, I just felt there was a greater need for a work-life balance. Um, and so I found an option to actually still work in travel, but work for a home-based setup agency. So um, that's why I decided to start my travel business as an independent affiliate of a larger group of, of umbrella of travel agencies um, and just offer more flexibility, more work-life balance, um, the ability to choose my own hours, choose my clients, offer more personal service um, as well, which is which you don't get the opportunity to do when you work in a corporate office. Um, have the ability to actually go out and see clients, which is great, um, and actually choose the way you want to um, structure your business um, and be more in control. Terrific. There's lots of really great reasons there. Thanks. So when did you realise that you were actually in business? So when did it feel like it really was a real business? What was it that made it feel real? I would say it kind of felt a bit real when I realised I had to actually be in charge of everything. So I had to be in charge of the marketing, the accounting, um, aware of cash flow, um, bookkeeping, social media. Um, That's when I realised how much is involved in starting your own business. Um, Mm. You literally have to be account manager through to a general manager. Um, And so that's quite a real um, sort of reality check um, when you are starting your own business because normally when you're in an office you have people you can turn to but when it's your own business you have to rely on yourself a lot so that's quite that was quite a reality 
check that I was actually really in business and cash flow was a huge reality check for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know that the audience listening to this are people thinking about starting a business or in that early stage. And it really is a, a moment in time, isn't it, when you go, okay, so there's actually no one else. It's just me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. Definitely. That's true. So if you think about when you were working in other um, businesses, like working in other travel agents, in, in travel shops, how did you know that people wanted this um, individualised, personalised service? How did you know that that was going to be viable for you? Uh, I knew that was going to be viable for me. Having worked in corporate for a long time, I always felt um, that clients wanted more but there was never time to give them any more sort of personal service any chance to sort of have a chat and maybe talk about more of their leisure travel so there was all i always felt there was a need um that clients just are sort of looking for more than a transactional travel process um which is what you get a lot of in in, in offices and in corporates and um and it's just in my personality um, to sort of be able to have a chat with a client, go out and see them, have a coffee with them um, and get to know them. Um, and that's what I really enjoy doing. So I felt that there was definitely a need um, for that and that aligned a lot with my own personality, wanting to mm. spend and get to know that client a lot more because once you get to know them, you can then really personalise their itinerary. You know what they like in terms of where they like to sit on the plane, what favourite airlines um, what style of accommodation they like. So, um, and clients, I mean, it just you, out, even outside of travel, any sort of um, industry, if you can offer that personal service, makes such a difference to that relationship with the client. So, mm. And I think it's interesting, more and more as things become more commoditized, there really is this desire for people to have um a niche personalized attention isn't it and then you've yeah. taken it a step further by having it as the um, sustainable traveler so not just personalized but actually for people and we'll talk about that in a moment but for people who actually want to be sustainable as well yes most most definitely I find that um, I mean a lot of people can book travel online but you, if something goes amiss if if you're looking for that extra special attention the online platform just kind of offer that to you mm -hmm. so um it's great to be able to offer that to clients and um i know clients really enjoy that um you know arriving at a hotel being greeted by name and they already know you know your preferences ahead of time is just adds that little bit of an extra mm -hmm. like care and touch to a booking so and that's what you can add to um, to somebody's travel arrangements. Yeah, most definitely. And that's actually what I enjoy doing the most. I absolutely love adding those extra touches to a booking for a client. Um, and, you know, even the, uh, there was actually one particular, I've got many stories I can relate to, but um, ones that I enjoy doing is when clients arrive to a hotel and, and um, they have a welcome note on arrival and might have a nice fruit platter in their room ready an upgrade in their room as well, which is really lovely. Um, many, many things we, you know, you can add to a client's booking just through that extra personal service. It's it's very nice. So very satisfying for you as a as a business person and as a customer service providing that service. Now you mentioned cash flow. So in the early days, how did you fund the business and then how do you fund the ongoing business? So you don't have to be in the nitty gritty of the details, but, you know, how does, I, I guess as a travel agent, you know, you're not setting up a shop, so you're a mobile travel agent, but you do need some money. So how did you fund the early days? Um, so funding has all actually been self-funded. So um, I actually started the business literally through word of mouth through word of mouth, through friends and family. Um, I had to start a whole client base from scratch, basically. So a lot of friends and family. Um, and so the funding of the business was just personal um, and through obviously um, sales as they grew. Um, and, and it's still that way now. So um, it's all funded through sales. And so just to clarify, the money comes in by a commission or a, a funding through the sales of the business. Yep, that's Correct. fine. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you said your early customers were friends and family. Um, how do you find new customers now? How do you know where they are? 
Uh, so, the, yeah, early days, friends and family. Um, and new customers now coming through uh, a lot of my referrals and word of mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, networking. I absolutely love uh, networking in person and on social media. Um, my two preferred platforms um, at the moment are LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, so I get a lot of referrals that way, um, but mainly through word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and but that's a constant sort of um, as the as I'm growing the brand. Um, the what we've sort of briefly talked about the sustainable traveler. It's still building um, sort of a reputation a sort of. Uh, brand name so um, a lot of people still aren't aware of, of that as a service um, but yeah still to this day friends and family they're still uh, my core group of clients um, and really really grateful for referrals that come my way as well mm. so just do you actively ask people to refer other friends and family that do you tell people that you know that this is what you do and do you actively ask for referrals uh, yes, definitely. And don't, uh, something I would give as advice is don't be afraid to ask for a referral because um, if you don't ask uh, for a referral, often um, the person that you, you've booked a, a, an amazing trip for doesn't realise that you are seeking referrals. Um, so just ask, always mm. ask. And um, don't be afraid to ask and be proud to ask, you know, that you have done a, a, an amazing job with, with that client, even if that client um, knows anyone else who's traveling who would like to have a personal experience, travel experience, then they'd love to be referred to. Um, I have in the past set up referral schemes. So I always like to try and reward or give back to a client that has referred. So a referral scheme is a good idea. Um, little things like a, maybe a voucher that you could uh, send them or a a hamper or um, even a thank you card. I mean, it doesn't ha even have to have a monetary value. A handwritten thank you card is a lovely gesture mm. um, for anyone that's referred you. Yeah, and, and just the time it takes to write a thank you card um, is such a, you know, it's such a surprise to get it in the post. It it's is. Such, yeah, it, it is, is lovely. And particularly yeah. if it's heartfelt and genuine. And yeah, I really yeah. love what you said there about asking for referrals because it actually goes to so many other businesses as well. It's not, it's not just your business. And I love what you said there about being really proud of what you do and proud of how you provide a service and then asking for other people to, you know, send their friends and family as well. That's lovely. I hope everybody's listening to that. Okay, so let's have a think about at the very beginning, what is something you wish you had done differently at the beginning? Is there something that you'd like to um, tell us about there? Uh, yes, look, it's a huge learning curve um, starting a business. So there's definitely a lot of things I've learned along the way. Um, something that I would like to have known um, in the beginning, again, I'll probably touch on cash flow, <laughs> um, the importance of cash flow. Um, it could, you know, make or break your business. And if you don't have, uh, for myself, um, fortunately, I have a partner who can um, offer some financial support, which is, you know, works for me, but may not be a situation a lot of other people are in. But um, there were times where I was literally um, had no cash flow and I didn't understand how that works. So I'd, I think understanding cash flow, learn about that, learn uh, if you can afford a bookkeeper, perfect, they can help you as well. Um, try and account for everything in the cloud. So using the cloud software um, early on um, is, is uh, useful. Um, and... Just um, something that I would have learnt, like to have known early on, is have a have a clear vision. Your vision and your and your goals may change, and they probably will change in in in, the, in five years, ten years. But try and stay as true to yourself as you can. Um, for myself, it's probably taken me up until now to actually be true to myself and my vision. Um, and what I'm trying to achieve. And um, and I think if I'd had that a few years ago, I'd probably be maybe quite a little bit ahead of where I wanted my business to be now. But um, I think, um, yeah, if you can have a clear vision um, and also surround, I know this is another one, but surround yourself with people who can share that vision with you as well, provide you with support, support because 
having your own business and starting your own business um, can be very daunting and challenging and you need to need a lot of motivation to keep going with it. So, mm. um, so yeah, if you can surround yourself with some like-minded people to uh, support you it would be, um, it would be great. Mm. And, and get a real handle on the financial side of it, um, where the money's going to come from. And yeah, that's yes. some two really terrific pieces of wisdom there. Thank you. So who apart from yourself, and you've, you've hinted at a few different people um, during your journey, who has been the greatest assistance to you and to your business? And you can either name names or you can talk conceptually about um, people at you know, who are those entities or people that have really supported you? Um, my number one supporter, I probably would say, um, is my partner, my husband. Mm -hmm. um, he has definitely supported me from the beginning, uh, supported me, um, you know, with, with my vision, um, encouraging me always to be true to myself um, and what I'm trying to achieve. I'm fortunate, I'm very fortunate that he also has a design background. Mm -hmm. um, and also a uh, background in user experience and customer experience and service design. So I get a lot of um, assistance in terms of my web platform um, and sort of what to use um, and sort of how it looks and functions. So I'm very fortunate that um, I have that because that's quite um, uh, useful to, to have that in business. So I would I definitely hands down say that um, my partner is my number one supporter and, and inspires me as well. Um, family, um, I could definitely not do this without the support of um, my family um, and also um, friends as well who have supported my business in terms of booking their own travel with me and also referring me. Um, I also am an affiliate of um, MTA uh, travel as well. So the support I get from them for all the admin side of my business is very helpful. It means I can focus on actually delivering customer service as opposed mm. to worrying about, you know, invoices and things like that. So, um, yeah, very fortunate to be um, surrounded by quite a few people who do support my business um, and means I can then free up my time to do the things um, that I can focus on. <laughs> yeah. And you use the word fortunate there and, you know, it's, it's about setting that up for yourself, isn't it? It's about, you I know, agree. It, it didn't just happen. It's, it's been deliberate. It's been thought through. I mean, maybe you didn't deliberately choose your husband because he had a design <laughs> background and would help you with your website in the future. But, you know, like these are the things that, um, you know, there's other things there that you've put into place. Like you said, a bookkeeper, your MTA, these are the things that help you run the business better. Yes, definitely. It didn't um, just happen. No, and I do a lot of self-taught, um, like, as well. So I've read, I read books, I watch webinars, I listen to podcasts, watch YouTube, you know, follow a lot of people on LinkedIn. So I'm constantly learning off others and seeing how other people do things as well um, and yeah. just try and follow that and try and implement that into my own business mm. as well. Yeah. Yep, to follow the ones that have done it and done it well. So who can give you really good feedback? Where do you get your feedback from? Uh, feedback. Um, I, I would probably say feedback would come again from my husband. He gives me some very good feedback. Um, because he's not in the travel space, he always gives me a different perspective. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. really important as well um, is to get um, some feedback from somebody that's not in your industry because they will always give you a different objective or different perspective which is really good so i always get very good feedback um from him and um feedback would also come from various other people obviously clients as well get feedback from clients actually within the travel industry itself um i deal a lot with hotels and sales managers and get a lot of feedback from them um, so yeah, and I'm also, I guess, um, critical as well of what I do. Um, and also I don't take things for granted. I'm always trying mm -hmm. to look at what mm -hmm. I do, seeing how I can improve on it, seeing how I can, um, what solutions I can um, provide to the problems that I see. So, um, 
so yeah so i kind of like yeah internal feedback i guess if you want to say as well yeah, yeah. being able to self-assess and take that on board yes. and make yeah terrific yeah. so someone comes to you and says i'm thinking about starting my own business what would you say to them I would say some fantastic. <laughs> um, I think that's I think that's great. Um, I you know I wish I'd started a business many years ago. Um, so I think that's fantastic. People wanted to take the step and start their own business. Um, I think it's very rewarding. Um, I would say to them, set yourself um, uh, sort of parameters. Set yourself um, times where you work on the business. Um, times for yourself. And, and that sort of thing. Um, try and have some clear goals as well. Um, try not to get too distracted, especially if you're a home-based, if you work from home and you're not in an office, try not to get too distracted by your surroundings. Um, and just, um, you know, be prepared to, to, be the, to be in charge of everything. Be prepared to, mm -hmm. you, you know, that you have to literally um, take care of all angles of the business. But what I must admit, I do enjoy that because um, it means I can get a better understanding of how different facets of the business work. Um, but I do, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of, it is work. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your own business. You're in charge of your own business, your own boss. And that is so rewarding when you can have that work-life balance. Yeah, that makes such a difference, doesn't it? It does. So Three characteristics, Diana, that are the things that set you apart that make you successful in your business. What are those? You've hinted at a few, and I'm sure the listeners are already thinking about what their answer for you would be. But what do you think your three key characteristics are? I would say um, I am very passionate um, about what I do, and that will range from offering customer service through to, um, you know, networking within the industry so that I've got the right contacts for my clients, um, attention to, to detail. Um, I'm really passionate about, and I'm also really passionate about travel. I absolutely love travel and I know what travel can offer, um, how rewarding it is um, to get it right. So I'm really passionate of, of offering um, attention to detail on travel and the whole experience. Um, I'm also um, very uh, genuine, um, I guess, and, and honest um, with, with myself and what I... Oh, I'm getting stuck again, sorry. Um, hang on one sec. I've got, also got my children at the door. So at this point, we took a super short break so that Diana could take care of her little ones and then we continued. The whole, one of the main reasons of doing all this is to have that flexibility um, mm. as a parent um, as well. And I, I often don't talk about that because I try and keep my personal life separate to my business. But being a parent, having children and the flexibility of your own business, working hours and school and drop-offs and pickups. Um, is really um, important and, and a lot of what I do is, is around them. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so is that a characteristic of, of that you think is essential for yourself? Yes. I, yeah, I would say that's one of my characteristics. Um, yeah, being a parent and, um, and what I – and actually, to be honest, what I do – a lot of what I do is for, um, for being there for my children. And I know we've touched on a little bit, but the re one of the main reasons why I set up the Sustainable Travel is I felt it was, um, it, it felt like I was actually doing something positive and that's going to create a much more positive future for the children, for my children, for our children, for the next generation. Um, and, yeah, it just felt it just felt like it just felt right to sort of do that. But yeah, no, that's <laughs> I sort lovely. Of, yeah, mm. I don't I don't really talk much about my children, but they are really important part of what I do yeah. and why I do what I do. So yeah, and that that's um, completely understandable. Yeah, mm. very nice. Thank you. 
Is there anything else you'd like to add that we haven't talked about? Because thinking about the audience, and I think that last part that you just talked about was particularly, you know, for people who are in a similar situation to you, a young family wanting to find something that can create a balance for creating an income for themselves and being able to take care of a family and creating a future. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful combination. So is there anything else you'd like to add at this point um, that for our audience? Um, I'd like to add, I guess, find some, uh, you know, there's, there's so many influences in, in our lives at the moment and um, you can easily, you know, be swayed to, to do something and do another thing. But you are, we all have it in ourselves um, to be sort of passionate about um, something so deep that it's what you sort of, it, in, it, um, it's what you sort of feel like you are meant to do. And I just think if you can find that, um, fantastic. I think it's really amazing when you do actually find what your passions are. Um, mm. And if you can, yeah, if you can find that. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit lost again. <laughs> That's okay. Do you mind if I ask you, because you have worked as an independent travel consultant for some period of time and you were, mm. you and I, and, you know, I'm, I wanted you to come on the podcast some time ago and it wasn't right for you because it wasn't quite the right business. But now that you're in this business with the sustainable traveler, you feel a different level of connection to that connection to what you offer your uh, clients. How did you find that? Um, yeah. So like um, how I found that I just, I got to a point where um, I just felt it wasn't, it just didn't feel right anymore. Um, just booking travel all the time, just booking it. It just felt like, and um, it was like a commodity and something being taken for granted. And, and, um, and I was always voicing my frustration to my partner, my husband. And he used to always just say, just do it. It's just do it. Make it all about sustainable travel. And the reason why um, I didn't start it in the beginning, which I wish I had, but you sort of learn as you go along is that the, the travel market, the space, the, the, the travellers, the consumers, I felt like they weren't ready for it. And, mm. and uh, creating a brand new sort of travel market or, you know, is, or any sort of new sort of concept um, is, takes a lot of energy because you are literally creating a new market. Um, so it, it, um, it sort of came around, it did come around through frustration because I didn't actually see anyone doing this. I couldn't actually see anyone in the industry making these positive changes when I know we needed them. Um, and I just felt, well, if no one else is going to do it, I'm going to stand up and do it. So um, I made the decision to, to create the brand, the sustainable traveler to focus on um, eco-friendly options of travel, create awareness for the traveler as well, to be more uh, sustainable as they travel um, and just create like a um, a sort of community for travellers to be amongst other travellers as well to, you know, be like-minded. Um, but it, it just didn't feel, for myself, it didn't feel like it was the right time to do that a few years ago. Um, and mm. now, it, now it, it has. And I'm actually um, creating quite a lot of awareness and I'm actually getting a lot of people coming up to me you know, of telling me that they're quite inspired by what I'm doing and it's inspiring them as well, mm. which is really mm. amazing. Um, I didn't expect that, that I'd be inspiring other people to actually pursue their own passions and their own dreams. And a lot of them is related around sustainability. Um, so I, I felt um, the time was right and it's been amazing. It's to actually have the brand out there now to have a platform out there um, to have this, um, to be able to actually voice some awareness um, of the way we travel and, and hopefully change um, the way we are traveling. Um, there's so much more I could say. I'm just getting a little bit stuck here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. So setting up the sustainable traveler um, has actually given me a chance to voice 
um, my views and opinions and raise awareness on the topics that I'm very passionate about. And that is sustainability, travel, the environment, animal welfare, conservation, um, you know, veganism as well. So it's actually given me a voice, which is something that um, I haven't had the opportunity to have. Um, and that's just all from having um, and starting my own business. Um, and I definitely, I, I do um, regular blogs on my website, which is mm-hmm. thesustainabletraveler.com. You can also follow um, me on Instagram, which is the sustainable traveler, uh, at the sustainable traveler, I should say. Um, and so, yeah. We'll put those links in the show notes and uh, with the transcript of the um, interview. And Di, and I call you Di because I've known you for so long, mm-hmm. but Diana, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the um, podcast today. And I just thank you so much for your honesty and, um, you know, to be so open. I know you are a very private person and to talk the way you have about your business and what it means to you um, is because you would want to inspire other people. And that's what this podcast is designed for. It's designed to inspire people who are thinking about starting a business and what are the real benefits of starting it and I think what you've talked about there at the end is part of the true benefit of having your own business is that you can have your own voice and you don't always have that opportunity when you're working with somebody else so I thank you very much for being so open and sharing so deeply thank you Ingrid thank you for the opportunity and I hope um, I hope it's uh, useful and helpful for others yeah, I think it will be. And if anybody wants to get in contact, we'll put all of um, Diana's contact details in the um, show notes and you'll be able to contact her directly. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening. Diana has been along quite a journey and maybe some of you listening can relate to the way Diana describes what being in business has meant to her finding her voice, being with her family and making a difference to her clients and the overall business of travel today. I know so many of you write to me and tell me that one of the reasons that you want to start a business is because you want to make a difference in the industry that you're working in. It's admirable. My huge thanks to Diana for this interview conversation. And as always, you can find full transcripts of the podcast over at my website, healthynumbers.com.au, links and show notes. Before you go, there's some gifts for you as you dream about building your business. Do you crave to have actionable steps to help you get started? What to do next? Are you looking for someone who truly gets what it's like to actually start a business? Someone who knows what to do and when to do it to help you get your business off the ground? Then head on over to my website, www.healthynumbers.com.au, where you will find so many resources waiting for you. I look forward to sharing with you some of the things I've learned from 15 years of business experience working with hundreds of people just like you. You'll find my business checklist ready to download so you can avoid the common mistakes so many people make when starting a business. I use this same checklist with my clients and the feedback from them has been great. So I want you to share it as well. What are you waiting for? Jump on over to the website, download your checklist and start building that business of your dreams today. And as we always say, as we close our podcast, ideas without action, well, that's just what they are, ideas. What action are you inspired to take today? Till the next time, thanks so much for listening.